Hello, I'm Pete Forsyth, Principal of the Wikipedia Training and Consulting Agency Wiki Strategies and instructor of the free online course Writing Wikipedia Articles. And today what I'd like to do is show you something about how we capture uh, high quality photographs from old books and incor incorporate them into Wikipedia articles and make them available for general reuse in, uh, in any number of ways. This is intended to be an overview screencast, uh, hopefully of interest not just to intermediate to advanced Wikipedians who want to do this kind of thing, but also to librarians and academics who might have an interest in uh, digital publishing and how it relates to preserving uh, information from old texts. So let's take a look at an example. This is a Wikipedia article about a member of the Lewis and Clark expedition of the early 19th century. And as you can see, there is a photograph, uh, but it's not a terribly high quality one. Let's, let's take a look at the photograph. I'm going to click on it, and this will take us to the image description page. And if we scroll down, we'll learn a little bit more about it. We'll see where it came from, the centennial history of Oregon. And if we continue down a little further, we'll see it was uploaded uh, by a user About Movies uh, in 2009. Uh, About Movies is a friend of mine, and uh, I've, I've seen him upload many files like this. Uh, I haven't talked with him in detail about it, but I'm pretty sure what he's done is he, he had access to a number of books, uh, perhaps through a library, or maybe he owns them, and, uh, and had some kind of scanning or photographic equipment, uh, maybe not the best. Uh, I think he started this in maybe 2006, so technology has certainly advanced a great deal since then. Um, but he, he uploaded a large number of photos like this to illustrate Wikipedia articles. And this is a really useful thing uh, to have done. Uh, in the Wikipedia world, uh, something that I, a, a sort of a common attitude that I think is sometimes missed is that it's better to do something that pushes an article forward that makes it a bit better uh, than to hold off until you can do the most perfect job of it. So uh, for all these years in between until someone uh, decided to come along and try to get a, uh, a higher quality version of the photo, at least there has been a photo and among other things that lets someone like me know that a photo exists and that there might be a possibility of getting a higher quality version of it. So let's take a look at what we do have available. This here is uh, a higher quality version of the same photo. Uh, and this is from a book, uh, as, we, as we saw in that image description page, called The Centennial History of Oregon. Uh, it was published, I believe, in 1912. So before 1923 means that it's fallen into the public domain in the United States, and we, there's no legal restriction on republishing it. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of other files, <clears throat> a couple of other photos from this same book, because as, as you can see, this one is part of a montage, so it's actually not uh, the largest, highest quality photo you'll find in the book. But here is a photo of the state of Oregon's first governor, John Whiteacre, and uh, here's a, a photo of Tabitha Brown, uh, a founder of Pacific University. So you can see these are, uh, these are even higher quality and uh, uh, maybe even more worthwhile to import into Wikipedia. So what I want to do uh, today is is give you a bit of a sense of where photos like this come from and where you might how you might be able to transfer them over. So you might have heard of something called Project Gutenberg. This is a, a an internet project that uh, actually was not originally an internet project at all. It originated in the early 1970s, uh, and it was an effort. It was and is an effort to, uh, as it has says here, to digitize and archive cultural works. So. Um, what Project Gutenberg did starting uh, many decades ago was to transcribe texts uh, so that, that that text would be available in digital format. And in the years since, much of that work has been uh, re-presented on the internet in places like, uh, like Wikisource and like another one that we're going to see in a moment um, in ways that make it more broadly available. So. The next step in our little uh, survey of the history is the Internet Archive. You may be familiar with the Internet Archive for their, uh, their Wayback Machine, which I think is maybe the best known uh, tool that they offer. 
uh, the Wayback Machine as a way to find web pages that have been taken offline. But it's actually not really the main focus of their work. What they do, they're a nonprofit organization based in San Francisco that partners with libraries and archives and, uh, and digitizes books that are uh, generally uh, books that are in the public domain. Uh, it, they produce uh, high quality scans. They have uh, very sophisticated equipment and processes uh, that allow them to digitize uh, huge quantities of text and in very high quality. So what we're looking at here is the book version of the Centennial History of Oregon. And as you can see, you can page through it. Um, but this is actually still not the highest quality scan, even if we were to blow this up. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a presentation of the DJVU format uh, version of this, it's, which is kind of similar to PDF. And it's a, a format that's mainly designed to uh, preserve text information. Uh, it does a pretty good job with photographs, but uh, this is not the very highest quality. So as long as we're going to do this, we might as well do it right. So what you'll also find on the Internet Archive is on, on every one of these pages, you'll find a list of links to various formats here. And what we, we want to do is look at all the files available. And uh, the one in particular that we're interested in is this one right here. So um, this is a, uh, a, a compressed archive uh, or maybe not compressed in this case, but it's an archive that contains every single high quality page scan in JP2 format, which is a lossless uh, compression format. It means that it hasn't been, that basically file size was not a consideration here in how they preserved it. And you can see that reflected in the, in the size here. It's the biggest one of anything on this page. It's 726 megabytes. So if we were to download this entire archive and go digging around to find that one page, that would be a pretty time-consuming process. It would require a lot of bandwidth. Uh, it would require a fair amount of space on our computer. So if we want to avoid that, that would be a, a really nice thing. So the, uh, the project where a lot of this gets done is actually a sister project of Wikipedia called Wikisource. Wikisource uh, does a very similar thing to archive.org, except uh, in general, Wikisource draws from places like archive.org and creates tools that allow uh, anyone in the world to refine those transcriptions. And, and, and it allows Wikisource to produce really high quality versions of texts. Um, actually, I'm going to uh, just click briefly on the main page here. Let's look at... Um, Let's look at this month's featured text, which will give you a sense of, uh, of, of that quality level. So here you see this is, uh, it's not at all reflecting the, uh, the, the scan of the page. This is transcribed, so we have actual text here. Um, we could copy and paste out of this. We could run it through machine translation uh, if we wanted to read it in French or something like that. Uh, it really opens up a whole lot of options. You can, you can uh, add hyperlinks to the text. So here, let's take a look at chapter seven. We can just click right on it. Okay. And each one of these pages links to, uh, links to the page that it's including. So I'm going to click here on page 111. And here you can get a sense of where this came from. You see the scan on the right hand side and the text on the left hand side. And if we saw a typo in there, we could just hit edit and go in and, uh, and make that correction. So Wikisource is, uh, is a great tool for collecting everything from a, uh, from a text and presenting it in a more useful form. In this case, uh, we're still interested in Mr. Hunt. I believe this is, uh, let's see if I'm remembering the page right. Nope. Uh, so okay, so I have I've lost track of what page it is, but if we uh, if we click here on the title, we're going to see the view. This is a more in progress one than what we just looked at, but now we can page through uh, the entire document if we like, and I'm going to try to. 
bring us right to the picture of Mr. Hunt. Uh, let's see. I had it pulled up here before, and I somehow lost it. So there we go. So uh, what what we see here, and this is the last link that I'm going to uh, demonstrate for this less technical screencast. Um, there's a little link here for improve this image. So through uh, kind of an interesting process, that JP2 file has been brought into Wikimedia Commons. Actually, it's been brought into uh, into Wikisource so far, and. Uh, if we click on improve this image, we're going to see the file description page for that. It's been converted into a PNG file, which uh, I think takes a little bit less space than a JP2, but still is full quality. And if we click this link, original file, we can see that this is that full resolution version we were looking at before. And so it's been largely prepared to move to Wikimedia Commons. And once it's on Wikimedia Commons, uh, there's really no end to what we can do with it in the Wikimedia space. We can add it to the Wikipedia article. Uh, we can um, we can add it to any other related Wikipedia article and still you know refer to it from the same place. So we only have to have one copy of it. We could also crop out each one of these four uh, and upload those as separate files. So uh, as you can see, the role that Wikimedia is playing here is is really allowing information that has been very diligently preserved through the efforts of the Internet Archive uh, and and bringing it into a format where it's much more accessible and reusable uh, by anyone without technical skills or huge computers or lots of time on their hands. So I hope this video has been informative. Uh, I will be producing a more technical video if you're interested in uh, in that process. Uh, so look in the links on the accompanying pages for that. Thanks for watching.